Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is day, I think day 21, day 21, day 21 in Canada. Um, today is my first full day back in the woods. I just got back from Pipestone yesterday. So I've got all this stuff here to get in my boat out there. Uh, I got a launch ready to rock. We've got beautiful uh, 63 degree temps for high today. Northwest winds at like 15 to 20. So that's going to be fun to deal with. Forrest is just leaving now. He's got a musky guide trip today, but I am solo today, and then I will have a very special guest starting tomorrow for the next four days. Bye, Forrest. Oh, Forrest wants to wave to everybody. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. But yeah, uh, gotta go get gas, load up the boat, and then we are off to musky fishing. So here goes nothing. Alright, let's get the party started. Today, it is windy, I'm sure you can hear the wind. I'm gonna start on a spot that I have never fished before. It's really close to home and probably gets overlooked by a bunch of people, but it looks really good on the map. So I got my side imaging rolling. I'm gonna go with the best bait I had yesterday, which was this musky frenzy. 8.9 stagger, kind of walleye color, great color. Gonna need shades. There's quite a glare on the water this morning. And let's get to scouting for special guests tomorrow. It's gonna be good. So dealing with the water temps I got today, right? So we got this cold front, the water temperatures have dropped. They've dropped about two degrees overnight. The last spot it was two and a half. So something I like to do is downsize your bait size, okay? Pretty common thing to do. Um, but a little something that I do different with some of my baits is, for instance here, I got a musky frenzy. It's another uh, stagger, it's an eight, it's an eight nine. Actually an eight eight, uh, number eight Colorado, but then it's a number eight Indiana. So this bait is awesome, right? Great spring bait, um, great for going through weeds. It's only got one hook on it. But since I'm fishing rocks um, and I wanna fish this bait a little bit faster, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add weight to it. I got myself a bell sinker right here. I'm gonna add on to it. And then I'm also gonna add a hook since that I'm not fishing around weeds, I shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, so both of, this, both of these things here are both gonna add weight to my bucktail. So it'll keep it a little bit lower so I can fish the bait a little bit faster. So, it's as simple as getting yourself a split ring pliers, sharpen up this hook, and then you can attach them just straight to the wire from your bucktail. I'll put the, the weight right in here, and I'll slide a bead down, and I'll put uh, this, the uh, hook on top of this bead here with a split ring. So I'll show you how I do that here in a second. Okay, so you've got your standard three, I think this is a three quarter that Nick's got in here, so a three quarter ounce weight. But then I'm also gonna add probably another half ounce between the split, the, uh, the bell sinker and the hook. So I'll get that bait down a little bit more. Around the wire, just like that. So there's my bell sinker, right? There's my bell sinker. I'm gonna slide one bead down. Probably go, yeah, just one. We'll just do one. So you want that hook to stay away from the blades. This on your wire, just like that. So now you got a bucktail with two hooks and added weight, and this thing will fish a lot deeper. Got her. <laughs> Oh, first spot downsized. Fish on. I don't think she's hooked super good. Good fight. All right. 
Come back here. I don't want to lose. Oh, she's got two hooks pretty good. All right. And the part that everybody likes to see, the solo net jobs. Come here. Yeah. All right. Let's get you unhooked right away. Perfect. All right, you just hang out. And there you go. Sweet, this bait feels so good in the water. It thumps even harder than that other one I was throwing because they're a Colorado and Indiana versus two Indianas. It almost feels like a single bladed bucktail. It's got that thump to it just because the blades are different sizes. So it's that offset sound. And this one seemed to like it. Another thing too, you see I have like all my tools right here ready to go. Just have them out and available so that you're not always digging and scrambling when a fish is kind of its heads out of the water like that. I got my hook removal tool right here. I got a scissors right there. And if I need anything else, it's right, it's right here underneath me. It's my, my first, if I open this up, right here, box, hook cutters, extra pliers, uh, extra two pairs of hook cutters. If you lose one, you're gonna need another one. So all kinds of extra stuff, but make sure it's readily available so as soon as you hook these fish and get them in the bag, you can get them recuperating as fast as possible. All right, let's show you this fish real quick. She's not gonna take long to release. There she is, nice little fish. Take any cold front fish I can get. Got it right in the nose. Sharp hooks are so key. Like I said, if whenever you get a cold front like this, get out as early as possible. You know, the, the, the sooner you can get on those fish before that cold front really sets into the water, the better chances you are at catching fish. So as always, they're biting, and we're gonna get back to fishing. Just like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that was cool. So cool. So two spots ago is where I got that other one. It's a nice fish. You are not coming off. You like the frenzy. All right, put us on anchor. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Cold front mornings, that's where it's at. This fish actually came out of a little bit of cabbage that's in there. And uh, she could have been on the cabbage, she could have been on the sand. There's a little scattered rocks, it's just a Beautiful spot. You couldn't really ask for much more out of a spot. We caught one here with Forrest, a really good one on uh, our series A Week on the Woods. Forrest got a really nice one here. And then Jesse lost one here with me. And yeah, this is a nice 44 incher or so. Came in, awesome figure eight, darted off, came back, and love it. All right, same bait. Musky Frenzy Stagger, double eights. That's an Indiana, that's a Colorado. That's an extra hook, that's an extra sinker. Seems to be working. I don't know necessarily if it's, I, it's not my adjustments um, that's making these fish bite, but it's definitely helping me run the bait where I want it to run. So always uh, fine tune with your stuff. Terminal tackle is so cheap and uh, you can you know make your stuff do really cool things with small small adjustments so let's get a look at this fish here all right let's get a look at this one nice fish solid figure eight fish are so fun and when the dark days like this these fish just glow when they're chasing your baits 
darted off, came back, and kind of hit it out of nowhere. I didn't even see the fish come back. My, I was ripping my rod through the water and it kind of disturbed the surface I couldn't see. And then the rod just loaded up, so <laughs> I am tickled. Love this place, love this lake, love these fish, and things are going good, so always got to go get another one. He's doing great. Actually, I'm going to get some underwaters of this fish. There she goes. Sweet. Well, three spots, two fish. That's good, and we're not even to the best part of this spot yet. Like, that's just the sand. There's still uh, some rock, a rock point that comes out, and then where we've seen the bigger ones is actually down the edge of the rock point. So, we're not even to the best part yet, and that was a really nice fish. So, whatever. If we don't see another one here, it is what it is. We'll just go to the next spot because they're biting. So, just caught that one. I'm gonna check my hooks again. Always sharpen your hooks after you catch a fish. Takes two seconds. And if you lose one, well, there's just nothing you could do. If you lose one, you check your hooks and they're dull, you feel like crap. They're biting, but it's worth it to take the time and just check them. <laughs> cool. On the cast. Three fish and it is quarter to 11. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh boy. I know, I'd be mad too. Come here. There we go. Well, they were getting bigger, but like I say, on cold front days, take whatever you can get. And to get three fish by myself in four hours of fishing, not even, three hours of fishing is pretty awesome. So I, what was it? This is the third spot since I caught the last fish. And fish came out right where they normally do. Uh, we haven't been seeing a lot of fish on this spot. Me and Forrest both fished this one a bunch. And uh, I've only seen one fish here, and I don't think Forrest has seen a fish here yet. But it's one of those spots you just got confidence in it, just keep fishing it, eventually one's gonna show up. And one just showed up on the back of this frenzy, so. <laughs> nice. There we go. Little frenzy doing work like it all right let's do this fast it's kind of sprinkling I got my jacket on all right here we go <laughs> what an awesome morning it said it's only 11 o'clock I've been fishing for three three and a half hours third fish of the morning super cool I actually just got a message from a buddy of mine so I think I'm gonna go pick him up so this is probably gonna be the end of today's video I think there's been enough action for you guys so if you want to see how the rest of today goes, here's kind of subscribe. Simple as that, because just like this guy, I'm eager to get back to fishing. <laughs>